that Christ taught the real will of God. And this is why Christ, that they, they try to impress God to the point where they'll judge someone to such a degree that we will find them worthy of death. But Christ, no, Christ, that was never the intention. Christ came here to forgive. It's, you don't need to kill anybody or call someone a sinner to prove yourself that, God, I love you. To prove yourself, to prove yourself, right? If you want to really prove yourself to God, begin to love people. Love yourself. Forgive yourself. Show yourself mercy and grace, and you will do the will of the Father. And when you do the will of the Father, He will reveal yourself. If you deny forgiveness, mercy, and grace to yourself and other people, you are denying God. Welcome back, guys, to the channel, Liberated Differently. So today we're going to be discussing how to act out uh, being Christ in your temple. So practically, this is going to be like a little tutorial of how to kind of perceive reality in a way where you are not producing death in the body, but you're producing life in the body while you're still surrounded uh, in a reality that is still in lower states of consciousness, practically in sin. So the idea is that God is trying to reconcile, or not trying, but he is reconciling your external reality back to God, or practically putting something into from disharmony into harmony using you as a mediator, your body as a mediator. Okay, um, we're going to start off reading from uh, John uh, chapter 8. So on verse 1, it says, Yeshua returned to the Mount of Olives, but early next morning he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Okay, I just want just. Okay, let's uh, spiritually interpret this. Um, right, he went back to the temple, which is your mind, right? And then, so for example, this is the soul, right? This is the soul. This is the mind, right? And then the law, the lawyers, right? This is, this happens all in your consciousness, guys. So that these people brought sin in front of your mind. So you're perceiving reality. You're seeing sin. For example, this is this is the woman who's caught in adultery, right? And they ask uh, Yeshua, teacher, they said to Yeshua, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And then they say, the law of Moses says to stone her. Let's kill this girl, right? And then they ask, what, what do you say, though, Christ? Okay, because in verse 6, they say, the religious people, okay, and we got to look at the religious people are the firstborn. This is Ishmael. This is Isaac. Okay, we know that Ishmael oh, did not like Isaac. Ishmael tried to prosecute Isaac. So out of the Abrahamic faiths, right, those who don't believe in the Christ, which is practically the Judaism and Islam, they don't believe in uh, the second birth. They don't believe in the crystals. So they revert to the law. Okay, the law produces death. Christos, which is the second one, right, is liberty. And Paul begins to explain that Ishmael was born out of the will of man, right? He was the firstborn, which is your first identity. You were born into a legalistic concept of God, right? But Christ says you got to be born again, born above, right? To be a spiritual person, right? Because flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God, but it's the spirit that inherits the kingdom of God. So it's not who you are and who you were born and what blood you were born into it's what do you believe in that determines if you enter the kingdom of god okay so you'll begin to see that the law prosecutes the law law worships death the principles of christ worships the spirit of liberty and life okay so this is how it goes right so they ask him verses they were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him but Yeshua stooped down and wrote in the dust with his fingers. And that word is not dust. Um, so practically, think he's in the temple and he's writing with his finger on practically solid, gro solid ground. What is, he, what is Christ implying here? I wrote the law, boys. The law that you're trying to use against me, the Ten Commandments, right? The ones that were given to Moses. I wrote them in the stone. It's my finger. I am the lawgiver. 
And also, now I'm giving you guys new laws, right? And they, and they and in verse 7 and 6, they kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, all, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone, right? To the lawyers. And then he stooped down and again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, practically religious, your religious mind or your legalistic mind or your cultural mind or your ethnic mind, okay, or all your false identities, right? When the accusers heard this, right, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Yeshua was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Yeshua stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? And she said, no, Lord, she said. And Yeshua said, neither do I go and sin no more. So practically, guys, practically, in your own consciousness, when you received Christ, you have to be the Christ in the situation. So when you see, right, in your imagination, right, when you see the sin, right, your subconscious beliefs, right, which is your firstborn and your secondborn. So this is the flesh that exists in you, right? The carnal man, the first man, or the false religions. This is the true spirituality, which is the second second identity, which is eternal, right? The first first uh, Ishmael will be cast out because he shall not uh, partake in the inheritance. But the second son, right? And these people who believe that they'll enter the kingdom of God through the law of righteousness, it says, you shall become last, thinking that you were first shall become last, because these people thought they were going to enter the kingdom of God first, and everyone else shall not. But Christ came, no, he said, you guys shall enter last, and then you shall uh, have gnashing of the teeth because you rejected the cornerstone, which was Christ, the new stone that God created, right? So practically, when you are in your brain, right, and you're perceiving yourself. Like imagine you made a mistake or you're seeing someone else that made a mistake, right? The whole idea we need to realize is that your temple uh, produces the future. Your identity in the present, in the present, the kingdom of God is now. So your, your identity at this present moment determines what you're going to experience in the future. If you side by the law, right, and you condemn, right, you, you have that critiquing voice in your head that might have been... I don't know, someone in your family or a religious teacher or like a coach or uh, or someone that you ran into your life that was really harsh on you all the time, they kind of imprinted themselves within your consciousness, right? And there's that voice telling you you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, or so, something to that degree where it's always condemning you, right? Always saying sin, which means you're not good enough or you're not loved, okay? So the law always practically condemns, condemns, which creates what? Death negative emotions in your being negative emotions is what creates the outside reality guys your your inner creates your outer so if your inner reality is based on legalistic interpretation of re, uh, of the experiences you're having on earth you're growing in death and your negative vibrations what do they do they interpret your reality in a negative way and attract negative experiences okay so what we want to do is we want to die to the carnal man right die to the law and begin to become christ in your own consciousness right as paul says it's no longer i who live but it's christ in me i'm experiencing christ expressing himself to the world to the sin in the world and and he's reconciling the world back to god right this disharmony this harmonious reality that we're seeing externally from us through our interpretation right using the principles of christ we reconcile it back to God. When we reconcile it back to God inwardly, right, by forgiving it, showing it mercy, not condemning it, not judging it, your emotional state changes. You bear the fruit of the Spirit. When you bear the fruit of the Spirit, your imagination, right, your inner, inner imagination changes, and that inner imagination is the thing that will produce uh, the realities that you see in the future. So, as Christ did here, he says, I do not condemn you. And you, I do not condemn you. So when you see sin in the world, do not judge or condemn. Because Christ says, do not judge or condemn because what you give out is what you're going to get. So if you're sowing judgment and condemnation, which is communicating to uh, people in your external environment that you're not good enough for love um, or you are not loved, that's what you're going to reap in your own life. 
But Christ says the Father does not condemn anybody. He came here to bring life. So how did he bring life? He says, forgive. Forgive the world. So in your state, in your meditations, when you go inwardly, forgive yourself. Don't stop being so harsh upon yourself. Don't be the legalistic, uh, legalistic law. Because think of it this way. Um, when you're legalistic, you become more harsher and harsher to yourself because you're trying to attain a certain feeling or relationship with God that you can't attain, right? And what happens is people become more judgmental. So let me let me read something. It's practically religious people, even though their incentive is coming from a good heart because they want they believe that God exists. And they want to follow God. But something they're not perceiving is that you can't impress God by being uh, legalistic or religious. Okay? Reli the laws of Moses, right? The laws of Moses were here to give law, to bring law and order to society and to reveal sin. It was never to be used as a means of getting back into a rightful, uh, rightful and proper uh relationship with god that's the mistake you moses right moses never entered the promised land he never prom entered into the the promised land that god gave to abraham it never happened but it was yeshua right joshua who entered into the promised land it was it was not moses but christ yeshua which is the same name in the old testament he was the one that helped them cross the river uh, river jordan into the promised land so the idea is that religious people, right, they say trying to impress God, even though they can't, they are not. So inwardly, they they know they're failing God, right? So they begin to overcompensate, right, by exalting the law and become more judgmental because they're trying to show God that I I, I believe in you, I know that you exist, and I, I want and I want you to know I believe in your holy law. That causes them to become more judgmental and harsher. And that even takes it to the point that they will even kill another person in the name of God. Without realizing that Christ taught the real will of God. And this is why Christ, that they, they try to impress God to the point where they will judge someone to such a degree that we will find them worthy of death. But Christ, no, Christ, that was never the intention. Christ came here to forgive. It's, you don't need to kill anybody or call someone a sinner. To prove yourself that God, I love you. To prove yourself, to prove yourself, right? If you want to really prove yourself to God, begin to love people. Love yourself. Forgive yourself. Show yourself mercy and grace, and you will do the will of the Father. And when you do the will of the Father, He will reveal yourself. But if you deny forgiveness, mercy, and grace to yourself and other people, you are denying God. So you're not seeing God because you're trying to impress God through laws by judging and condemning people. Christ, God forgave the whole world. Why aren't you forgiving the whole world? You see what I'm saying? So, practically in your inner world, when you go into your meditation, you know, you have you have like these uh, floating spiritual beings and situations and memories. And all of these ideas and memories and people are associated to certain feelings. Your job in your meditation and your prayer is to practically become the Christ and forgive everything in there. Show it mercy, right? And then the good one to do is bless your enemies. Okay? This will, this will reverse the karmic karmic cycle that exists within you when you evaporate sin inside of you by becoming the active principle of forgiveness. You are practically recreating an inner reality inside of you, which is the kingdom of God. You're going to begin to see the kingdom of God inside of you. And once you begin to see the kingdom of God inside of you, it will begin to manifest outside of you because everything starts from you. It starts from within and then out. If you're trying to regulate your external behavior to impress God, you're working from outside to inside. No, you have to start from inside to outside. Okay. But hopefully this helps guys. Um, but if I, again, if anything sparked your interest, uh, leave it in the comments, like the channel and, sh uh, and the share, share the channel. All right. Thank you, guys.